So let's define the kernel. Um, kernel, uh, sometimes also called the null space of a group homomorphism phi from G to H um, is the set. Um, so G and H are groups. Phi is a morphism. And the kernel is going to be the set of G in G such that phi of G equals 1. And so the kernel is somehow all of the elements uh, that, that disappear once we apply this, uh, this morphism phi. Um, um, so, you know, uh, so, um, and now what we want to show, um, so there's, there's a theorem. I'll, I'll state a theorem. Okay. So the theorem says that um, the kernel of phi, uh, which is notated in this way, um, which is a subgroup of, well, the kernel of phi is a subgroup of G. Uh, and in fact, is it is a normal subgroup, and is a normal subgroup. I'll I'll underline this three times just to because I'm emphasizing the fact this is a normal subgroup. Um, when I underline something once, normally that means it's a it's a definition. Um, and so the way that we notate something being a normal subgroup is this sort of um, this sort of triangle thing right here. Um, okay. And so the the um, so the way this the way this theorem will prove, so first we have to show that it's a subgroup. So we have to show identity, we have to show closure. Uh, we have to show inverses. Um, and then we have to show that it's, you know, closed under conjugation. Um, so let's show each of these in turn. So to start the identity axiom, um, so V1 is going to be 1. So 1 is in the kernel. That's what we want. Um, so for closure, uh, this will follow from, so if V of A equals 1 and V of B equals 1, well, that'll mean that V of A, B equals, you know, V of A times V of B, which is 1 times 1. So that means that AB will be in the kernel. That's what we want. Check. Uh, for the inverses axiom, we can, again, see that you know, if phi of A equals 1, we know that phi of A inverse equals phi of A inverse. Um, and so this would be one inverse, which would be one. Uh, so that's equal. Uh, so that implies that a inverse would be in the kernel of phi. So that's what we wanted. And finally, the conjugation. So what we need to show is that um, for any g in g, for any g in g, um, and for, and then for any, say, x in the kernel, 
then we got g x g inverse is in the kernel. And phi, that's what we need to show. We need to show so we need to show this thing. So the way we can show that is by applying the map phi phi of g x g inverse. We expand that out, we get phi of g phi of x, uh, phi of g inverse, but then this is 1 because x was in the kernel, uh, but then by the properties of, of uh, morphism of groups, as we said above, these two things are inverses of each other, so that will be equal to 1. Um, um, and we're good. Right, so this right here is the inverse of that.